Jesus. I know we have a lot of people here tonight. But let me tell you something. It doesn't matter how safe you are. Father, we thank you for loving us the way you do. Lord, you have done something that no one can ever, ever do. Not only have you given us wealth, but you put us in a spiritual position that we did not deserve. You have given us the sound of praise. And Lord, that praise only come up to you. So, Father, now we ask the name of Jesus that you speak. Lord, use me as you wish. For I am your servant, you are not mine. So, Lord, do as you do. Just need your sheep. And we'll be so grateful. We pray this in Christ Jesus' name. Someone say amen. Amen. Paul said, I want you to know 
Mm -hmm. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. You just got to know God. Yeah. You got to know. And when opposition comes against you, you got to know that you know. Yeah. That you know that you know that he knows. Yeah. 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 And you, then you got to know all that too. Right. That you are saved all right. All right. in Christ Jesus. Because some people will try your patience sometimes, won't yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think God has some, some, some cameras on us every now and then. And he sit back and he laughed at it. You know, they ain't getting into only if they knew how much I really loved them. Yeah. Then Paul said in verse 18 again, he said, What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance of in the saints? Then he closed out in verse 19. He said, I want you to know this. And what is exceedingly great of his power toward us whom believe according to the working in his mighty power. Yeah. Paul said, I want you to know them. Things. Mm -hmm. I want you to know that God has done something for you that nobody else can ever do. Yeah. Don't he deserve a praise for that? Yeah. In other words, Paul said, I want you to understand that not only believers have a spiritual possession, which is our inheritance, but also we have a spiritual position, yes. which gives God glory. Mm -hmm. Give God some praise for that. Yes. Praise God. We have a position in heaven. You know, I think about that word because we work so hard in life to get positions on our job, positions in the neighborhood, yeah. positions in the yeah. church, Positions. You know, this is the only place that you can be what you want to be is in, in the church of God. Come on. All right. All right. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But God, because you believe in him, has given you a position <laughs> in heaven. Yeah. You see, people crack me when they say, well, when I go to heaven, huh, let me tell you something. If you already in Jesus Christ, your body, your spirit is already in heaven. Okay. Yeah. This is just a journey that you got to go through to catch up with God have already given you. Yeah. God said, I already placed you yeah. in heavenly places. Yeah. Right. Right. That'll right. make somebody feel good. Yeah. Come on, come because on. verse 2 says, in chapter, chapter 2, verse 2 in Ephesus, the, the verse 2 says, and you were made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin. Oh, they don't have, I, I guess we're not going to get there. Chapter 2 of Ephesians. Come on, come on, chapter 2 of Ephesians, first one says, You were made alive. Yeah. Who were dead. Mm -hmm. Tell somebody, you was dead. You were dead. dead. But notice the text. He, no one else, God, made you alive who were dead. But notice Paul's verbiage. He said, You're, uh, You was made alive, meaning before regeneration. Before regeneration happened, we was like sponges on the beach. The elements had got a hold of us and drained us and, and took the life out of us. Yeah. You see, let me help you out so maybe you'll feel better about that statement. You see, research showed me that sponges have to have water running through it in order to obtain this oxygen and food. But also the water runs through it and remove the waste. All right. All right. You see, you have made alive because living water flows through you. Yeah. And because now the living water is giving you food and oxygen, and by the way, it removed the sin yeah. which was your waste. So God has made you alive who was once dead. Yeah. Yes, Just like you can't get past Jesus, baby. Check this out. One who knew history to take history out of school knows he who has no knowledge of the history will repeat his history. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Let me say it again. Yeah. Come on, come on. You wonder why people are acting the way they yeah. acting today yeah. because they don't understand where they came from. Yeah. They don't understand that you didn't walk into a school and sit in front of the classroom. Uh -huh. Somebody had to die for you to do that. You don't understand on the bus, yeah. somebody had to die for oh, that. Yeah. You don't understand that you have freedom, somebody yeah. and somebody died for yeah. your freedom. Yeah. And therefore, if you believe that your yeah. Christ Jesus died, then you ought to give him a prayer because somebody yeah. had to die yeah. in order to give you your freedom. Somebody had to Jesus. 
careful not to repeat mm -hmm. our past. Yeah. Yeah. First two and three says we were dead yeah. because we walked according to the course of this world. Mm -hmm. Learn, now notice the verb is we walked, ED, past tense. That's your history. Yeah. <laughs> we once were part of a cultural, but thanks be to God, we ain't there no more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You see, I know in this time that it does suggest uh -huh. culture have twisted mm -hmm. human rights, Reverend, yeah. with sin rights. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. You see, I'm afraid the world has found themselves <laughs> in Judges 21 25, where Israel had turned their back from God yeah. and started chasing heathen gods yeah. like everybody else. Okay. And Judges 25 said, was right in their own eyes. As believers in Christ, I'm glad God has saved us. How about y'all? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Because Paul said in verse 2, those who are operating according to the world is following the prince of the air uh -huh. who will save himself. Yeah. 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 But what's realized, what cracked me up, what realized is people don't realize, thank God, and I didn't realize it either. How many of y'all remember when y'all wasn't, wasn't saved? Amen. Amen. See, that's why you ought to be praising God right now. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. If you realize when, when you wasn't saved, you know how you act. Yeah. And, and, but some of us can't praise God because we still act like that. Yeah. Yeah. Sunday. I've been tithing. I've been sitting 
sitting on the same, and that's all you've been doing, sitting on that same seat. Come on, come on. That's all you've been doing. When you start giving God accountability to what you did, yeah. because you deserve something for Him, come on, come on, come on, come on. then you're falling in your flesh. Yeah. Yeah. But then it says, and the desires are not of God for what, for what God wants them. They start pursuing it for themselves. You see, last week I told you in 1.13 that we are saved when we trust God and believe. So if your mind is doubting what God is doing for you, <coughs> you ain't believe. And if you don't trust God and you don't believe God, then what that say about your salvation? I'm going to go home and get that, pack it up, take it with you. <laughs> I told you last week, in order to stop operating in spiritual poverty, you must become spiritual wealthy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you did. Amen. You let, too many of us are letting the world rob us of our joy. Yeah. Joy, and I'm glad my, 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 how you said it, joy is not something that you have and you put in your hand. Yeah. Joy is something that you have in your heart. Yeah. Yeah. And the last I checked, the world can't open your heart and put nothing in it. Yeah. Jesus Christ is the one who put joy in your heart. Yeah. I understand that you want some nice things, and that's good. Yeah. I understand that you might get a box of chocolate and four said, you never know what's in a box of chocolate. Yeah. So you might get some candy you just don't want. That's like those your card. Deal with it. Yeah. Hebrew. 
And so I got it firsthand from someone who knows the language. Yeah. And I thought about that thing when I was paying that sermon. Now, God sent me some authenticity to show me a language that is really a lost language. All right. How much authenticity do we read, do we want if we don't open the Bible and get it from God himself? Yeah. You want people to tell you what God said, but you don't open a book and read what God yeah. said. Right. The only right. way you can get to where God wants you to be is that if you read the word of God. In order for me to graduate, I had to learn Hebrew. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't going to get past That's right. until I learned. And some of us are still in module one, trying to get to module two. Mm. But you won't learn God. because you won't take time to go through he who still speaks the original language. And that's the Holy Spirit. Oh, my God. Oh, I, I, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. Put that in two case so you get on. Tony, you're telling about it. And, 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 so all that is, verses four or five says this. But God, yes. who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us. Yeah. Lord have mercy. Even when we were what? Dead. Go ahead and read that. Made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Go to verse 6. And we love together. And made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Praise his holy name. That first word just should have messed somebody up right there. Mm -hmm. But God. God. But God ought to get a praise. Amen. Amen. But God ought to be a praise. But God. Yeah. All that you done, mm. all that you were, yeah. God, no one else but God gave us a new life. Yeah. He gave us a new beginning. Mm -hmm. And why? Because he's rich in his mercy. You see, you didn't earn this part. God gave you a new life. But God gave it because he wanted to, not because you asked him. You can pray all day and God said no. Yeah. Hey, you wonder why a person next to you not saved? I ain't talking about here, but in general. How did you hear the word of God? <coughs> and your spouse helped you. How have you fell in love with Jesus Christ on, but your co-worker have? How is it that one person can hear the word of God and you can't? That's because God picked you. He gave you salvation. It was a gift. Oh, I know it's getting hot in here. Let me hurry up. Why? Because his mercies are rich. Satan <coughs> has bound us. Satan bound us. He had us. Mm -hmm. he, went, he, he was at the party. You know there is a time called Armageddon. Come on. Yeah. And there's a war and he got to get his soldiers together for the war. And when it is, he had your name on his documents. Come on, come on now. He recruited you yeah. straight out the womb. Yeah. And he said when the war comes, I'm going to have me an army and some of y'all were chief priests. Yeah. Praise the God. Yeah. I know I was a lieutenant. Yeah, right. I had me a military branch in Satan Army. And I ain't got the pride on. That's something for me, for me, for me to remember. Yeah. But yeah. now that God has given me a new position, yeah. I should work harder for God yeah. than I ever work yeah. for Satan because Satan didn't have nothing for me but destruction. Yeah. He right. tore my life up. Mm -hmm. But since I've been in Christ Jesus, yeah. 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 Lord have mercy. Yeah. I can breathe better. Yeah. 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 I can feel better. Yeah. Yeah. I don't look in the rearview mirror and see the police behind yeah. me no more. Yeah. I don't have them work. Yeah. Come yeah. On. Yeah. Come on. Talk I ain't drinking like a fish. Yeah. I ain't sitting there smoking like a choker. Yeah. I ain't doing all that. Come on. I'm loving life because God has given me life. Yeah. And he's given me abundance life. Yeah. Yeah. Of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, y'all like that. Y'all just, I don't know. Let me hurry up and get out of here. <laughs> In biblical terms, terminology, trespass means to step over unrighteous lines. Yes, 
So by God's grace, he reached over unrighteous lines where you had crossed and he brought you back to a righteous side. Because everybody on that side, not y'all, don't, don't, don't get scared. Everybody on that side is the same. But God pulled you back and gave you a new life. He gave you a chance to live. He gave you a chance to be with him. He gave you a chance to breathe as hell. He gave you a chance to, to deem his glory. He gave you a chance to say yes. I'm a child of the king. I don't know about y'all, but that just makes me Happy. And you ought to just be happy because God gave you a chance. Yes. How many of y'all remember being not even in church? Yeah. Had no desire to go to church. Yeah. No, oh, some of y'all still go there. Come on. Come on. Come on. You teach Still, church was the farthest thing from your mind. Yeah. Being saved was the farthest thing from your mind. Yes. And too many times we see it today, people say, I got time. I'm still young. Or a 13-month-old baby just got killed. Now, how are you doing, God? I'm in the hospital every day. People come out dead. How are you doing, God? God is offering this. And you ought to thank God that you already accepted. Yes. Because God's grace yes. and mercy has brought you through. Yes. He took on death and Jesus died for our sins and he gave us a new life. Yes. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says it like this. Therefore, mm -hmm. if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things. That's all things. That's your little nasty way. That's your foul language. That's your backstabbing attitude. That's everything that you did, we did. All things I passed away. And behold is a presentation word used to, to introduce something that's extravagant. He said, Behold, all things have became new. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Behold, uh -huh. all things. Yes. So next time you get into a rut, behold, yes. all things yes. that Christ Jesus yes. has given me. Your, oh Lord, I can't live with it. Let me just put it in a nutshell. Your future is better than your past. Yes. Yes. Jesus who brought you back from death yeah. Yeah. to eternal life. Yeah. And verse 6 says, for those who, 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 who like segregation, you might not make it. Because the Bible says other nationalities are going to be in heaven. It says because the Bible says he made us sit together. Yeah. 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 Together. Amen. Verse 7 says this. That in the ages to come, he might show us exceedingly riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Now, rightly so, God is going to get his glory out of you. Come on. God uses the rebirth of believers to demonstrate his wealth, his riches, and his glory. So that's why I believe in John 17, the Lord's Prayer. Y'all know that is the Lord's Prayer. Yeah. Our Father who art in heaven. No, that's an example prayer. The Lord's Prayer is in John 17. John 17, 21, the Lord, Jesus Christ said this to his Father. That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be one in who? Us. That the world may believe that you sent me. See, your prejudice 
God saved us to be a witness for him. So don't go through this life thinking what you do is not a, don't affect other people. Amen. Well, I just do this, 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 this ain't got nothing to do with you. This is all about me. No. Whatever you do affects somebody else. Yes. Whatever you don't do affects somebody else. Yes. What you thinking affects somebody else. The Bible says, I gift is from God. So therefore, God won't get our glory for giving them a gift. Let me bring this home to you. Stand up. If I was to give, don't hang your hand out, I got a dollar. <laughs> if I was to offer him a dollar, but he didn't extend his hand, am I giving him a gift? I'm not giving it to him because he's not accepting it. In order to give someone a gift, he has to accept it. All right, all right. God said, I'm giving you something, salvation, a gift of freedom, but because you're not accepting it, that means I'm not giving it. But those who accept it now have a free gift from Jesus Christ. And a lot of us, we think that we don't matter in the kingdom of God. Hold out your hand, your right hand. Now close your pinky. What's the smallest thing in your hand? A pinky, right? Now, if that pinky is gone, what's your hand look like? <laughs> Deformity. Mm -hmm. And you can't really function without your pinky how small it is. Right. When one of y'all are missing from church mm -hmm. Come on, right and now. not doing what you're supposed to do, right. unity becomes dysfunctional. Right. Yeah. Oh, come on, come on. Yeah. We have a And what everybody else going to do it, what happens to the team? Yes. The church suffers. Well, I'm not going to usher today because somebody else will do it. Yeah. Then everybody says that. Yeah. And nobody's here. Yeah. Right, right, right. Come on. Come on. What you do and who you are in the kingdom of God is important. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. God is not ignorant. What he, if he, you here. Yeah. He placed you here so this church can be full. Yeah. He placed you here that because you have a gift yeah. to do something in the kingdom of God to further this ministry. Yeah. So when you act like you don't matter, let me tell you something. You acted against God because you really do matter. Amen. Amen. And that's why I tell you, if you're going to party, party on Friday, sleep on Saturday so you ain't sleeping at church on Sunday. <laughs> Sunday yeah. is the day that we say, one day a week, we're going to get together and love God. Amen. One day a week, we're going to get together and praise God. Yeah. One day a week, we're going to come together and work together. Yeah. We can't be committed to one day a week. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. I ain't fussing. I know we got to guess. I'm not fussing. I'm just telling you. Yeah. How important we are. Uh -huh. Those seats I know they should be full. Amen. But one day a week, somebody said, you know what? God is not that important to me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. One day a week, I'm going to do what I want to do. Well, why don't you do it on Saturday? Right. Yeah, right. All right. Are you here? Amen. Why do you take off work and do it on Friday? Yeah. Because you want the money. You feel in your flesh. Yeah, yeah. Are y'all hearing? Yeah. But you wouldn't even be able to feel the flesh if God didn't even give you the money to feel the flesh with. Yeah. Just one day a week. One day. You ought to make it your business. Come on, come on, come on. That's all God asks. Yes, sir. Give me a tenth. A tenth. 24 hours. Yeah. What's a tenth of 24? 2.4. 2.4 hours. That boy was smart. 2.4 hours. <laughs> Give me 2.4 hours a day. Yeah. Just with me and you. Come on, come on. Come on. That's all God asking. What's that lead? Eight what? Seven and a half hours. You can do what you want to do. 
And somebody like, hey, that for you right now. <laughs> but y'all got the point. Verse 9 says this. Being good is not good enough. You have to have faith in Jesus Christ. Which is to say you must believe in the totality of God. You have to believe that his death, burial, and resurrection was for you. And this is what Paul is telling the church of Ephesus. You were dead. Because now you're alive. Ephesus has started following all kind of God. And when you walked into Ephesus, God and Diana was up on a stage, a fertility God, where all kind of stuff was going on up under it. Yeah. <clears throat> in the churches, in the synagogues, uh -huh, uh -huh. orgies, uh -huh. all kind of stuff going on. Yeah. And the Christians in Ephesus <laughs> was leaning towards that. Paul said, don't go back to that. You were dead uh -huh. and Christ uh -huh. brought you alive. Yeah. Why would you ever go back to that world? Yeah. And that's the question I propose this morning. Christ bought you out. Why would you ever go back in? Because if he bought you out of something, that out of something was sending you to hell. Yes. All right. All right. Yes. All right. If God delivered you, yeah. that means he set you free from something. Yes. Why would you go let that put you back in bondage? Uh, right. That's that's. That's like asking about it, a battered spouse when your head and got knocked off. Amen. And the police come take you out and give you an escort, put you in a house and heal you, and you get back on your feet, you go right back. Amen. You would say, that's one foolish person. When well, any time you find yourself going back to what you were, uh -huh. remember that like, you're a foolish person. Amen. And it's called backsliding. Amen. And God said, will give you a reprobated mind. If you don't believe me, look around at so many people you see that used to be in church. All right, all right. They played with God one too many times. Mm -hmm. Out of their mind. Walking around the street, itching, ain't, ain't, ain't nothing scratching. <laughs> Are y'all hearing me? <laughs> look at, I'm going to tell you something we all know. Look at the music industry. <clears throat> They get their start right here in the church. Yeah. Yeah. But then they say, oh, that ain't enough money. And they start singing everything else. Right. Next thing you know, they did. Yeah. A broke, a drug out. God doesn't play, ladies and gentlemen. He saved you. Yeah. <clears throat> he bought you back. As I prepare to close, look at verse 10. We are his workmanship, created in Christ for what? For what? Good works. See, this contradict sitting on the seats doing nothing. All right, man. All right. How can you say, well, I'm a good pew sitter? Amen. 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 I don't know nothing about that. When God, when God saved me, I was on fire. That's why you you you, you got to really ask now you really saved. Yeah. Because when the Holy Ghost get inside of you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, sir. Jeremiah is just like yeah. fire. Yeah. 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 Amen. Shut up in my bones. You yeah. you you can't quench the Holy Spirit. Come on, come on now. Yeah. And when God give you something, oh, pastor, I was gonna do it, but they just got on my nerves. I look, look, look. God gave this to you. Yeah. That didn't yeah. give it to you. Yeah. God did it. Yeah. You ought to at least tell him thank you and reward him. Talk his cheek. You ought to be able to work in this kid. You got to know God gave it to you. Paul said, I write this letter that you may know that Jesus Christ bought you back. You owe him your blood. Because it was his blood that took your name off that list. Say, here's your name. Off. And some of y'all names said, God said, no, it's my time. Yeah. And he 
wiped it off. Yeah. My God, my God. It's time to stop playing. Come on, come on now. And being yeah. who you are. Yeah. Verse 11, 13 says this in closing. <clears throat> Therefore, remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands that at the same time you were without Christ, being alien from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having what? No hope. And without God in the world. But, 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 but now, Lord have mercy, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far out have been brought near Yes, thank you. Battle blood. Battle blood. Battle blood. Battle blood. Battle blood. There's something about that blood. It's yeah. the blood. Yeah. Oh, it's the blood. Yeah. The blood that can make you whole. The blood that yeah. will wash away your sins. Yeah. The blood. Yeah. That make you whole. Yeah. As I close, Jesus loves you, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Yeah. And he has proven his love for over 2,000 years. So today, if you have not confessed Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I got one question. Come on, come on. Why not? <clears throat> what is so good about being unsaved? What is so good about being not a member of a church where you get support? What is so good about not having someone around you to hold you accountable? That, what is so good that you're not reaching for the gift of freedom that Jesus Christ is handing you? What is so good about that? Your decision today about being unsaved is the best decision or the worst decision you're going to make in your life. For those who are saved, Jesus has earned it. He has earned our faithfulness to him. He has earned our commitment in the kingdom and our love for one another. But some of us, we found ourselves in verse 3. Come on, come on. Conducting our lives in the flesh. <laughs> fulfilling the desires of your own mind. Yes, you have to serve Jesus, but some of us have let go. We're not committed. Every time you say something, you say, I was going to do this, but... I was going to go to church, but I was going to get involved with the youth, but I was going to be on the usher board, but I was going to do this, but all them buts are in your way. We run to the gym to work off a but. But there's one but you don't have to work off. God will work it off for you. I'm talking to you, come, come stay. On, come on, come on. Church, go to the church, go. Your
services, we pray that the message refreshed your soul and that God has spoken the word to you. If you're ever in Jacksonville, Florida, we invite you to come celebrate our risen Savior with us at 12156 Pulaski Road here at Unity Baptist Church. Until then, may God richly bless you. God bless you. Look down. How many of you walked in here this morning? Look at your feet and point to them and say, thank you, Lord, that you got feet to walk. You got a voice to talk. How many of you? How many of you?
you had a place of soup last night. Aren't you blessed? Aren't you blessed? And yet there are some people all